Good afternoon. My name is Jay Cousins. I'm here to present to you the Oracaso range of products from Flat World UK Limited. We're looking for £100,000 worth of investment for a 10% equity share in our company. And the products in question are designed for backpackers and lightweight travellers. This is a bowl, so as you can see, the bowl's completely flat, takes up no backpack space, and you can use that for soup or cereal. These currently retail at £3 for two in the UK, $3 in the US for one. We don't have a cup. These retail for £2.50, or in the States they retail at $4. As has an insulated handle, you can use it for hot and cold drinks. This is a multifunctional dish. It's very simple. To assemble, you can use it as a deep dish. You can use it for straining liquid from your food. This holds the food in, this lets it pour out. You can use it as a spout. Pinch it there, you can use it as a funnel for pouring hot water into your thermos. And if you've got coffee filter paper, you can put the filter paper in the corner and use it for making fresh coffee as well. We sell that for £4 or $6 in the States. And we also do the items as a picnic set, retailing at $24. Thanks for your time. Jay is prepared to give away a 10% share in his company in return for an investment of £100,000. Jay, I think the product looks pretty good. Thank you. Um, what I'd like from you, really, is where did the idea come from? Tell me about... The idea originally came from when I was uh, hitchhiking across Europe with a friend of mine. As we were packing our bags, I noticed that the products that we were using, they weren't designed to be compact. They weren't even designed to be lightweight in the majority. Is there any market. other products on the market that's, that's similar to this? There's, there's nothing similar to it at the moment at all. Nothing at all? The, the closest to the cup is a cup that's made out of rubber that doubles inside of itself, or a telescopic cup. The telescopic cup leaks, and the rubber one, rubber taints the, the flavour of the food, and it's not as compact as the one that we do at the moment. Talk to me about um, temperatures, Jay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've tested these to minus 30 degrees Celsius. No, hot temperatures. Hot temperatures, they're heat resistant soft. to 120 degrees, which is why we Because it says it goes soft on your cautionary advice. It hot softens. food or drink will soften cup. Does it make it kind of... No, it doesn't, it doesn't make it floppy or flimsy or actually affect the function of the product. Are you involved with other designs of other products? Um, I would not... Um, develop any further ideas unless it was within the business until you have actually seen a return on your investment and I would personally guarantee that to you. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. The Dragons are impressed. Jay's handling their questions well and with no direct competitors in the market his product looks promising. Doug Richard has more questions. Okay, so how would you spend this £100,000? Because of the fact that we're trading with America at the moment and it's where the majority of our orders are coming from and uh, them wanting a China price, we need to be able to go to China so we can achieve the profitability that we're looking for. Your American business constitutes the majority of your revenue? Currently. We're selling a product to REI, the outdoor retailer, who have reordered the um, product seven times since they first got the product in their stores in April. They, they love the products, they love the packaging and they're, they're basically flying off the shelves at present. That's a good answer. Thank you. It's looking good for Jay. Proof of sales in the US has captured the Dragon's attention, but Duncan Bannatyne wants to know how well he's doing closer to home. Are you talking about um, the American market? Mm -hmm. So have you tried making money out of this in the UK? Yeah, we've just got into Millet's top 10 stores and uh, Decathlon have just placed an order for their UK stores. What's been your experience of the sales in those 10 stores? Um, I haven't feedback on that yet. Why don't you know? Why, why haven't I followed it up, do you mean? Yes. The, the reason I haven't followed it up is because currently it's a staffing time and resource issue. I've been managing the orders from the existing distributors. Oh, Jake, not being rude, retailers. but don't. That's cringeworthy. It's absolutely cringeworthy. Please, just, just say, look, I haven't, I've made okay. a mistake and I haven't right. been able to do it. I mean, to pick up the bloody phone. Okay, all right. It takes yep. 30 seconds. Not, okay. Don't give me some 
cock and bull story. I was, I'm into this at the moment. And okay. Just be straight. All right. I, I apologise. I haven't picked up the phone yet. Despite a good start, Jay's beginning to look unprepared. Duncan Bannatyne has a far more fundamental concern. You have valued your company at £900,000. Well, I didn't, I didn't tell you that that was the valuation. But well, you said 10% yeah. for 100000 mm -hmm. which values your yeah. 90% at 900000 mm -hmm. Well, currently we're doing £200,000 worth of turnover this year forecast. Yeah, but turnover's vanity and profit's sanity. Jay, let's go out three or four years. Yeah. Post-investment, mm -hmm. your estimated turnover. £7 million. £7 million pounds turnover. Yeah. Zero to seven million in 36 months. Mm -hmm. I'll eat one of the cups if you do that. Oh dear. That, that's how many units? That's 20 million units sold. Yeah. Jay's overambitious plans to dominate the world market in backpacker crockery has shocked the dragons. Their trust in his business judgment is wavering. Jay. Jay, let me, let, me, let me tell you where I am. You get a great product. Mm -hmm. You really do. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I want to invest in you, and mm -hmm. there's no bloody way I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Your numbers just don't work. You are not worth 900,000 pounds to me today, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to make an investment today. Doug Richard thinks Jay has overvalued his company and he's out. Peter Jones has also come to a decision. Jay, well, I have a concern over you insofar as I know that you've gone to Millets and, mm. and you've ranged it. Now that, there's a congratulations. But the fact that you've not even bothered to call the guy back to check up on your product, that concerns me. Because that's not a guy really worried about whether it's selling, how's it doing, that's basically his whole life's on the line because he needs the sales. I can't be selling my product to the States, fulfilling orders, managing my supply chain, preparing for trade shows to bring on board more distributors. I can't be doing everything at once. That's why I'm here and asking for money. You've not come up with any numbers that you're going to sell through which routes, which will produce which revenue, which will give me which net profit. All mm -hmm. I've got is a, is a piece of plastic that actually I've put water in it and it doesn't leak, so it works. But I've got no market opportunity, so I can't size it up. So my answer where I am at the moment is, looks like a great product, but you're, at the moment, you've made yourself uninvestable for me, and the market opportunity, you've not given me a vision of that, so I won't be investing either. Now Jay is in real trouble. Two dragons are out, and he must rely on the three that remain for the £100,000 he needs. You've got a, a fantastic knowledge about your product, mm -hmm. and where you're going with it. I just don't think Mm -hmm. There's enough business out there for your product. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I'm not going to invest either, so I'm out. OK. So you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've changed my mind several times in talking to you. Mm -hmm. uh, whether this is uh, an opportunity or not an opportunity. Mm -hmm. At the moment, you have a product. Yeah. And my valuation on that product is that uh, it's nowhere near your valuation. It will only be worth your valuation if someone likes me, like, like me makes that investment and uses my skills, my knowledge, to create the value. Mm. I've got a choice. I'll either take a punt on you mm -hmm. or say to you, thank you and good night. Mm -hmm. So this is the call I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. I will invest yeah. £100,000 for 50% of that company. That's Martha. Think about it. Jay came to the den looking to give away only 10% of his company. Um, is what you're offering actually your time or is it merely your money? I've got to tell you, when I put 100,000 pounds mm. into an investment, mm -hmm. I'd be all over you like a rash. OK, it's, a, it's an interesting proposition. My, my issue at the moment is, is with the percentage. I believe 50% is too much. I, I, I see the value of having you on board. 
A hundred thousand yeah. pounds. Yeah. Well, given given what you're proposing at, at present, I, I can't accept that. I'd be willing to offer twenty percent for a hundred thousand pounds, but it's fifty percent or nothing. Then it's nothing. Jay is determined to stand his ground, but now only one dragon remains. Jay, I can understand why you refused Theo's offer, mm -hmm. but 100,000 for 10% is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 100,000 for 20% is still ridiculous, or the numbers you've given. So I'd be prepared to offer you 100,000 for 40%. I would be giving away too much of a share of what I've worked for for the last three years and I'm confident I can actually find a better deal, which is why I'm turning down your offer. So, thank you for your time. Jay is leaving empty-handed. In a remarkable show of confidence, he rejected two offers. The dragons are shocked. He's going to regret turning that money down. He could have had 50% or 40% if he'd taken your offer of a very he'd, large he'd pot. He'd have had 60%. Uh, what I didn't tell him, <laughs> what I didn't tell him was that the chairman of uh, the outdoor group, David Bernstein, is a personal friend of mine and they own Millets and Black's Leisure. <laughs> but I thought I'd leave it to him to make his decisions first. Jay, two offers, no take. Yep. <laughs> Why not? Um, well, Frankly, I, I, I value my company at, at more than what they were prepared to offer, and I'd sooner walk away than take the shareholding that they were offering. So they give you something that was helpful at all, other than offers that you didn't want to take? And I, I found it, it, it was a useful experience to be able to um, pitch to investors of that calibre. Um, I'm, I'm, I've, I feel for them a little bit because they've missed an opportunity as far as I'm concerned. You don't and have to worry about them. No, you really don't no. have to worry I about think, them. I think they'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I hope to be in that chair in a few years' time. <laughs>